Hi, welcome to the Joe's Food Review. We don't have Sam, we don't, and we're still out of food, so it's still just Joe's Review. <coughs> Today we are reviewing this, The Dark Knight Returns. Now you may look at the title and think, oh, that sounds very similar to this or this. But let me assure you, this and this is not this. Also, this from the book is maybe extremely similar to this from that pile of feces, but they are not the same. Also, this scene. Who's there? It's the police, ma'am. Your son's been hit by a drunk driver. He's dead. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that's funny, Arthur. That's the kind of humor we do on this show. Okay. Is very similar to this scene, but that's why I'm gonna kill everyone in this room. They're not the same. Now let's get into this review. Now there will be spoilers, so if you want to read this, go away. Now, this book was written by a guy named Frank Miller. Here's his picture. And it starts ten years after Mr. Jason Todd here was murdered by the Joker. And there's this gang called the Mutants. Not these mutants. These mutants. <laughs> Um, and, they, and they're causing they're causing some serious trouble in the streets of Gotham. There we go. And the mutants with Commissioner Gordon dead. So Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne's like talking to Gordon like, "Thank God for ten years." And he's all like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And then Bruce goes back home as he does. He turns on his TV, has some hallucinations of Batman, and he decides, "You know, I'm gonna be Batman again." Now Harvey Dent, Two Face, not not this Two Face, this Two Face has been rebuilt, rehabilitated. He is a good man again. And they think he's a good man again. He's really not. Um, um, Bruce has a vision of his parents being brutally murdered in an alleyway by Joe Chill. And then he decides, I'm gonna be Batman again because his town's gone bad. And the Dark Knight returns. Now, the first thing Batman does as the Dark Knight returns, he stops this old middle-aged woman from getting murdered. There's a guy in an alleyway who's like, Sweet talk, me, mommy. And she's all like, No, don't do it, man. He's all like, Pokes out a little pocket knife. He's like, bow, bow, bow. And Matt Mans comes behind him and goes, And he throws him out the window, man, as he does. Then there's this dude, and he's throwing his chicken inside of the car, and he's like, You're messing up my livelihood, Joanne. And she's like, No, not again. Please, no. And he's all like, he threw the money at the taxi driver, and he's like, Shut your hairy face and drive! And Batman gets on top of the car. And he just, like, puts his hand through the roof and rips the dude out and throws him. And then the girl gets away. Batman goes, he's just running around, he goes down to the arcade where there's this girl named Carrie and Michelle. And, well, the two movements are like, bow, bang, 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 bang. And they're like, oh, no! And then Batman comes up and totally... He throws a battery for some guy's hand, and I can only assume he killed the other guy because he threw him to, like, some high-voltage thing. Now, the Batman starts chasing down a bank robbery car. There's two of them. He goes after the one that the police are going after. And he's there, like, flying as he does. And the a younger cop's in the car's like, Yo, what was that? And the old guy's like, Can't look now, kid. I'm driving. And, well, then the old guy sees him. He's like, Oh, my God. He crashes the car into like a old abandoned condominium, and he, and he starts chasing down the guy. And the guy's like, guy's like "I saw Batman. Turk said he killed Batman." And the other guy's like, "Turk says a lot of things." And then Batman gets him. And the other cop, the younger cop, gets involved and tries to shoot him. And then they eventually win. Batman finds a coin crossed out on two sides inside the one dude's like shirt. And then he tells the order cop. Tell Gordon to contact me. And so he eventually does. Now, back at the Commissioner Gordon's place, he lets the prisoner, the, like, victim go. And he tells Bruce this over the phone. And he, and then Batman goes to his apartment at night. And he finds him, he finds him, beats the crap out of him. Finds out what Harvey's doing. Then we find out that Harvey is going to blow up the Gotham Life buildings. There are two of them. There's gonna be two bombs, two helicopters, $22 million. Oh, and Batman fights, you know, he fights him. He fights Harvey. Harvey's Two-Face, not this Two-Face, that Two-Face. And he does that. And this is where, like, second comic ends. Okay, if the first comic was about Batman returning, this is about Batman succeeding. 
And well, this one starts off with a girl named Carrie Kelly, and she decides to become, she wants to be a Robin. Here's her picture. You know, all the pictures are gonna be like right here from that one. So she decides to be a Robin as you do. She's jumping around and stuff. She's like stopping muggers. She likes to stick a dynamite over a guy's rear end in the boat. That doesn't happen in the movie though. And so she's doing that. Then we get a shot of these, um, the mutants are, took a kid hostage and they want to pay their ransom. And so, and we find out that their plan is that once they get the kids, they're just gonna shoot them. They're gonna get the money and run. And so Batman stops on me. He interrogates one of them, finds out that the weapons are coming from a military base, and this dude's selling them to him. Then we learn through the point of view of Robin that the mutants are going to be meeting at the dump. What's happening, a new police commissioner is hired. Her name is Ellen Yandel. She's very anti-Batman, much like the new commissioner from Dark Knight Rises. Batman hops into the Batmobile, which is more like a tank, like a big, big tank in this one. And he goes off to the dump to fight the leader. Batman gets out to fight the leader, Robin watches... Two hits, then he starts getting totally destroyed by it. Robin comes out of the shadows and distracts the leader. Batman is able to throw some glue, glue stuff in his face. Uh, Batman and Robin are able to get away and, and get into the Batmobile. They get into the Batcave and Batman takes some time to heal. Now this, I can see why they removed this from a movie because it literally has nothing to do with the story. But it's some crazy guy named Arnold Crump who looks like Rorschach. Watchman shoots up a porno theater after listening to Led Zeppelin stare what happened 47 times backwards. Uh, the mayor of Gotham is having a meeting with the leader, the mutant leader, uh, bites out his throat. Okay, so this is the plan that they had. Carrie dresses up as a uh, little mutant child and tells them all to meet at the like the West End pipe. And the mutant leader finds a vent in his cell that leads to this pipe, and then Batman is hiding in that pipe and he punches him out and he beats him up, tells him that he is a surgeon, and this is my operating table, and breaks all his limbs. And Batman wins. The majority of the mutants, or a good bit of them, make a new gang called the Sons of the Batman. Now, third comic starts. Oh, let's double check here. Um, it starts in a liquor store, and this lady who has swastikas on her boobs with her two henchmen that were former mutants, um, tries to shoot it up, try to steal stuff, and Batman, dressed up as an old lady, beats the crap out of him. They all do, they do that. And Superman shows up. Now back at the Arkham Institute, the Humpty Dumpty looking guy is giving Joker lipstick and nose plugs. The nose plugs, you'll see why later. Lipstick, also later. So, Joker has something planned. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Humpty Dumpty gives him the lipstick and nose plugs. And Joker has him invited to, to be on a talk show. He, he can talk about himself with his doctor, the very anti-Dr. Bartholomew Whooper, who looks like a hipster and a hippie. And Humpty Dumpty, he, he's his, I'm pretty sure, yeah, his real name's Abner. I just like calling him Humpty Dumpty because that's what he looks like to me. And he makes these dolls, and they run around, they're like, <sighs> and they have poison as a laughing gas that comes out. And everybody smiles, and they all die. It's similar enough to the one from Joker. They're both on a talk show. And also, Joker takes the mug, and he's like, the guests keep, you know, get to keep these, and he smashes it over the table, and, you know, kills his doctor. Okay, so, now, after this, Joker goes to Selena Kyle, who is Catwoman, and with the lipstick he receives, he kisses her, and now she's under mind control. So this lipstick was mind control lipstick. 
Batman and Robin are riding around the city when a congressman wearing an American flag jumps off the building. This is strange. Batman disguises himself as a policeman to get some more information about what happened. He finds out that the lady in the room is from Kyle Escorts, which is Selena Kyle's business. We cut back to Batman and he is in Kyle Escorts and he finds uh, Selena tied up and dressed up as Wonder Woman. She tells Batman the Joker has gotten way worse than he was. Joker's now uh, causing a big fuss at the carnival. Joker's killing a lot of people. Batman follows him to the... He wants no survivors. Batman follows him to the House of Mirrors. One of the dolls flies to the top of a roller coaster while he's in there. And it's ready to explode. Robin shoots it off for a slingshot. Humpty Dumpty does not like this. Not one bit. Uh, he then gets his shirt on the chain on the roller coaster and gets the head rotated because his head went down. And, and Batman, Joker's outside a tunnel of love. And Joker stabs him a bunch of times. And now Joker's like, Get me, get me! But then Joker kills himself. And we get this iconic frame. So in the previous Star Court, I, want to talk, I kind of forgot to talk about Bat, uh, Superman. He is in this book a good bit. He's employed by the government. And so in the fourth book, Batman and Robin get out of the carnival and they go back to the Batcave. And a TV broadcast is done by the president. And he is in a rocket. And we get this clip. Superman goes up to stop the nuclear warhead. He's gonna take trove and push it somewhere else, as he does. And so, he does that, it explodes close enough, and all the electricity in the city gets cut out, and riots start. So Batman gets a group of all, like, Sons of Batman and all them together, and they uh, bring peace back to the streets. And then, like, about, pretty sure six months later, Batman and Superman fight. Batman, Superman has it in his laser vision, he's all like, into the ground from the sky, and he's all like, where? And I don't remember how they get the message back across to him, but they fight in Gotham. They're fighting. Um, Batman makes sure Superman remembers that he is the one man who ever beat him. Then Superman uses his x-ray vision to look inside his heart, and he's going to die. And then Bruce, ty not Bruce, Clark tries to tell him, and Batman dies. And then we're at the funeral. There is like Gordon, Superman, Selina, Carrie. Selena yells at Superman, saying that you did this. And then Carrie is like dressed up in all black, covering her face. Then Clark hears a heartbeat. Turns out Batman's not dead, he faked his death, and he's training some mutants. So that's the whole book. So what do I think of this story? I think it's a great book, and a lot of DC movies in the new millennium. And before I draw heavy inspiration for this, oh, whoopsie. Here's like a little list, the Dark Knight Rise. It's very easy to see Batman turns from a hiatus due to a tragedy, and Dark Knight Returns, it's Harvey Dent's death. I mean, in Dark Knight Rises, it's Harvey Dent's death. And in Returns, he stops being Batman after Jason Todd is killed. Both tragedies make him stop being Batman. Bruce is a total, but Bruce is a total recluse in Dark Knight. Um... It, he's a total recluse in between Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, the eight year period. And that's like one difference, even though they're pretty, that's a, that's a difference in between the similarities. There's a scene at the Dark Knight Rises where Batman's being shot at and all you can, you can only see Batman because of the flash of the gun. Dark Knight Returns, there is a frame similar to this where the mutants are shooting at him at, at the arcade and you only see him because of the flash of the gunshots. Batman v Superman is pretty similar to this. There's a, there's a shot from the movie Paint Homage to this. This, like, cover. And the bat armor is pretty much the same. And I would go as far as to say the bat logos look very similar. They're both very, like, wide and, like, they're very blocky, I would say. Now, Joker, I've not seen it, but the talk show with Robert De Niro is obviously influenced by this book. My final thoughts are, well, I really like this book. It's a, 
in the movie adaptation, The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Returns are probably my... Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises and Returns are probably my favorite DC movies. I find their quotability on the levels of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. If you've seen them, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that was uh, my review. Thank you very much for watching.